We had absolutely wonderful Holy Week and Easter celebrations. My goodness. You can check them out by going to our webpage and clicking on the homepage banner that says Love is Alive. You'll see everything from the proclamation of the Passion to the washing of feet to snippets from the Easter Vigil. It, it was just amazing and my heart is still warm just by thinking all of, of all of it. And I really hope that you are well. I am. I hope you are. This weekend we continue the Great Easter Feast and we'll hear the story of the one we call Doubting Thomas. Our Gospel question is, do you think you're like him or not? Thanks for joining. We call him Doubting Thomas. I mean, there's long been some good humor around that. I always liked this meme. Here's Thomas saying, yeah, right, as he walks past a sign on the edge of a cliff that says, danger, bridge out. The caption at the bottom says, the other disciples were always visiting Doubting Thomas in the hospital. <laughs> are, <laughs> for people of a different age, this picture needs no explanation. <laughs> <clears throat> we call him Doubting Thomas, but I could argue that Thomas gets a bad rap. I mean, that name has always bothered me a bit. I mean, the scriptures tell us that the other disciples also doubted and they were also afraid. We call him Doubting Thomas because he was the only one who said it out loud. I think we really should call him Honest Thomas because Thomas was one who was honest enough to say out loud what I think most of them thought and felt. I mean, of course it was hard for Thomas to believe after what he had seen. Do you think you'd have been any different? I don't think I would have. I mean, their world had been dramatically and forever turned completely upside down. And all of us have times when our worlds are turned upside down. You know, whether it's on a global scale or much closer to home personally. I mean, don't we? Then, how strong is my faith, right? Well, a question, how strong is your faith, my faith, now? To help us answer that, let's take a quiz. Now, for this quiz, you're not going to have to share your answers out loud. You can change them as you go, even as I read my answers. I certainly encourage everyone to answer this honestly. And there are six questions. When we go back to grade this little quiz, I'm going to grade them hmm, the best I can according to what I think Jesus would say. It's less about what I think, but more how I think Jesus would answer these. So, let's dig in. Question number one. How often have you doubted that there is a God? A from time to time, B, never, C, almost daily, D, during a certain period of my life. Again, how often have you doubted that there is a God? From time to time, never, almost daily, during a certain period of my life. All right, number two. How often have you wondered where God was to be found? A, from time to time. B, never. C, almost daily. Or D, during a, a certain time in my life. All right, number three. 
Yes or no? Do you think God causes suffering? Yes? No. Question four. How many grudges are you carrying these days, right? A, two or less. B, three or more. C, zero. Or D, I'm mad a lot. What do you think? Question number five. Are you working to be more kind and loving to the people with whom you live and interact? How would you answer that? Finally, question number six. How much do you care about and care for the bigger world beyond your own house? All right, now I, I went kind of quickly, so I'll just give you a few more seconds if you need to think about any of those, and then we'll check our answers. Again, this is how I would think, to the best of my knowledge, Jesus would have graded this quiz. Number one, how often have you ever doubted that there is a God? Whatever answer you picked here, I would say, good answer. You're right on. You see, count that as correct. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. Actually, doubt is often an integral part of an authentic faith, of a growing faith. As one spiritual writer said so well, I have a lot of faith, but I'm also afraid a lot and have no real certainty about anything. Faith includes noticing the mess, the emptiness, and discomfort, and letting it be there until some light returns. That's faith. Jesus would tell us it's okay that we sometimes doubt. Question two. How often have you wondered where God was to be found? Which of these did you pick? Again, I would say if you picked A, B, C, or D, count that as correct. As Jesus was hanging on the cross, he himself cried out, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Sometimes life is hard or scary or even heartbreaking, and God feels far away. God isn't, but it sure feels that way. All right, so far you got 100%. Let's check number three. Yes or no? Do you think God causes suffering? If you think Yes on this one, I'd have to say, nope. Count that as a wrong answer. I've long believed that God does not send suffering, not to punish us, not to teach us some lesson, lesson or to make us grow, and to bring good out of it. God just does not send us suffering. But when suffering does visit us, our amazing God is right there with us in it, embracing it, suffering with us, and can bring good from it. Nope. God does not cause suffering. Number four. How many grudges are you carrying? Well, I would say that your answer to this one matters very much to Jesus. The goal would be to do the work so that it's 
zero. Now I get that this is tough, so maybe at this point it would be one half, right? Not that we're not angry at how we've been mistreated or how we've, when we've seen others being taken advantage of. Not that we condone bad behavior. We don't. Or that we keep ourselves in abusive situations. No. But that we do the work that with God's help we can be set free from the bitterness and desire for revenge that tears up our souls and so much of this world. It is Divine Mercy Sunday. When Jesus rose from the dead, he did not spend a single second nurturing a grudge. No, he breathed on all those folks peace and invited them and us to be merciful. Number five. Are you working to be more kind and loving to the people with whom you live and with whom you interact? You know, the people with whom we live aren't usually the ones who most get on our nerves. Of course they do. We live with them. We sometimes just kind of forget that we love them. No. No one does this perfectly and there are skills to, to nurture about how we interact with co-workers and classmates and family members, you know, ways to reframe things, working on knowing when to speak and when not to, and more. It does matter that we do that work. And finally, number six, how much do you care about and care for the bigger world beyond your own house. Our religious practices are to help us on the journey. Yes, we need something to sustain us, guide us, comfort us, encourage us. But our religious practices are also to transform us, to keep us thinking bigger than our own little worlds, to spend our lives as Jesus did, working for a more just world, a more just world, a more loving world, a more loving world. It's important to love those right around us and to love the bigger world as well. So there it is. Grade yourself as you think. No one does this perfectly, this thing called life, this thing called faith. Please be merciful when you grade your quiz. Jesus did not shame Thomas, nor does he ever shame any of the disciples or anyone or us. But he does love us so much that he wants us to have an authentic faith. Doubts? No doubts? That's not the question. It's how we live that matters to Jesus. Back to Thomas. Thomas would not have gotten high on questions one or two. Thomas doubted. Thomas wondered. That's why he got called Doubting Thomas. But again, those weren't the things that were important to Jesus. The point of it all, Thomas lived his faith, doubts and all. And he did that so well, you know, those well, so well in those other questions that we not only call him Doubting Thomas, we also call him Saint Thomas. Yep, there's always been some good humor about Doubting Thomas, right? At the beginning of Mass, when I asked whether or not you think you are like Doubting Thomas, here, here's Jesus. Thomas, do you think Christians will ever appreciate that you were actually a person of great faith? I doubt it. <laughs> I asked whether or not you think you're like Thomas. 
I would argue having a faith like his would be wonderful indeed.